What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fine with my man, Eric Sheets Haber. We're going to be talking through tonight's baseball slate. It's a big Tuesday slate, and there are a million options. Um, yep. This is one of those slates where it's really, you know, it's it's probably more important to get off of if you feel like a team is getting chalk, but at the same time, you don't want to worry. It's a, it's a fine line. Like, you don't want to worry too much about there being too much chalk because it's going to be spread out a little bit. But you've got, like, I mean, all kinds of pitching on the slate. There's plenty of ways to get different. There's some offenses that stand out, but then there's other offenses that are going to be low owned that are projected to score just as many runs. And uh, it's just one of those states where we're going to have to pick and choose it. I think it's a good mass multi-entry slate or a big, uh, you know, playing, playing many lineups kind of a slate. But I, I currently wasn't planning on doing that today, but I think I might have to, to change my strategy here because this is, this is a lot out there to like and a lot of ways to get different. And, you know, a lot of pitchers who are going to be really highly owned versus guys who actually are supposed to strike out more guys and that are going to be way lower owned and it's just, Trying to figure out what we want to do, I think, is going to be an interesting, interesting route here. So, Sheets, any, what are your thoughts on this? And then we'll uh, jump into game by game. Yeah, so I, I went on kind of a little tirade about this when I was talking about the PGA Championship last week um, when I did the video myself. That, that and it reminds me of this. I want to get your opinion on this. So, so you get slates like this a lot in baseball. And maybe not that much, but when you get this full slate with a, with a zillion options and – Typically, I think about it the way you just did that, you know what, there's be so many options that don't worry about ownership too much because things are going to be spread out or whatever. But what I find is that, you know, that the industry just even even though the ownership should be spread out, yep. they just kind of just gravitate someplace, you know, mm -hmm. and they just talk themselves into the fact that one guy who projects one point better than someone else is like 70 times more likely to get there than the other guy. And, 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 it's just, I guess, natural human crowd instincts, you know, and, and, and that's, it, it, look, listen, it, it, it was the same thing with the PGA championship last week. There were a zillion guys that all you could make a case for. And somehow Rory ended up being the one that 35% of, you know what I mean? Right. And, right. And, and, and it just, it just happens that way sometimes. And so I think one of the challenges today is to, I would say to figure out, but just be, be, be wary of that. You know, don't, don't just, settle on you know the fact that one of these guys is like a lock you know and 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 and, and accept high ownership on a slate like this um so where one on the one hand like you said you could say i wouldn't worry about ownership i think you do um mm -hmm. but you got to be you know you got to really stay on top yeah and, and sometimes it comes up more in the last you know hour of people talking yeah. up certain things and pointing out facts or then the bvp things come out or things like that and uh, all of a sudden it, it changed everything. Cause I mean, even, even though projections, you could look at every projection system for golf last week, using the PGA as an example. And like, nobody was close on some of the, some of the plays, which was just, it was just hard. It was hard to, it was hard to know that, that, that everyone was going to skip Rom or for the most part, skip Rom and Scheffler, go to, go to Rory and, and Cam Smith and Jordan yeah. speed as your sort of general thing. Yeah. And uh he kind of knew with Spieth and, and Cantlay and that where they were going to be popular, but everybody else was sort of felt like they were up in the air and, and it could have gone either way. So it was kind of surprising. And then even you, even Mito, who I didn't see, I don't think any site had him projected more than 6%. He ended up only like eight or nine, eight to 10% in the small buy-ins, but in the big buy-in, he was like 20% owned. Um, Cause there's some sharp people out there. And then his price was obviously, you know, as much as he probably should have won that tournament uh, certainly did well for his price. But anyway, We'll get into today's slate. We'll go game by game if you want to share your screen. Yeah, and sure. um, I think that's the best way to figure this out. I think that there are some, I'll mention a few props that I like along the way. I'm going to, I'm going to start posting. Uh, my plan was when the NBA final started, I'd start doing my, my home run and my strikeout props every day. Um, and and I'm, I'm already starting to include some of them, but today I'm just sort of going to mention them over the air. Um, Cause I think it's an interesting talking point. And, and one of the, be one of my favorite ones is in this first game. Um, First of all, I'll, I guess I'll go first because I tend to do that with the Dodgers, I guess. Um, the, so you had the Dodgers against the Josiah Gray, who they traded away um, to get for the Scherzer in the Scherzer deal. Uh, as I've said many times, Josiah Gray is a pitcher I see with, as a, with a wide range of outcomes. He gives up lots of power. He can occasionally get wild, but he also has really good stuff and has some real strikeout upside. Now, you're not playing Josiah Gray. That's not what I'm suggesting here. But I am going to say that I, I think the Dodgers, I give them a little extra boost in this kind of a matchup. I, the Dodgers are not a team that I care about if they score 10 runs the day before because they, they literally could do it, you know, a good portion of the time. Um, the thing that stood out to me about this was the four and a half K prop for, for Walker Bueller. I know he's had a couple rough, rough, rough outings in a row. Um, 
And I don't think four and a half is a real number for him that we should be treating as a normal number against a weak offense. I think he should be five and a half minimum. I think you could argue for, you know, later in the season when he's maybe more in his groove, you might see him at six and a half or even seven and a half in this kind of a spot, which was what we were used to seeing him last year. Four and a half is just kind of ridiculous to me. I don't care whether it works tonight or not. It's just too, it's just simply too low. Um, And uh, I I think Bueller is one of many guys on a list that I probably, who I probably won't get to. But I think the Dodgers make for a good stack. It's not good hitting weather, which is going to take me away. I mean, the Dodgers scored 10 runs yesterday, and I mentioned this on air, that it's not good hitting weather for power. And, of course, they, they score 10 runs without hitting a home run. And in order to win, you, you generally want home runs on big slates. So that's the one thing sort of holding me back here from the Dodgers. But uh, I do like the Dodgers. They are one of my top stacks, even with all the weather. And I think that, you know, again, I like the catchers. I like the players who who played alongside these guys. I give them the edge. So you know, as much as I love Freddie Freeman, which I do, uh, I'll just give an edge to everybody who played with this guy, you know, whether him, him bouncing in and out of the minors into the majors, but uh, they're very familiar with him. They know the Dodgers are incredible with their scouting reports and everything like that. Just seems like a spot where it's going to be hard for Gray to, to get through this lineup too many times, but he's got good stuff. So um, Dodgers are, are one of my top teams. And if the weather was a little better, probably would be my top team. I don't do a lot of, uh, you know, in-depth analysis of the, uh, of the, of the props and like the sports betting in general, um, aside from just kind of like my instinct and my feel. Right. And, uh, what, when you, when you mentioned the, the, the viewer prop here, I, 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 I literally didn't believe it. You know what I mean? Like, uh, what my, my initial instinct is that, that, that four and a half prop is almost, almost like too low. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like I, I would almost be worried that there's something wrong if, if it's that low because who let's listen we and we you know we talked about this in our other project this kind of misconception of how these lines are created like is it actually created to get um to get equal amounts on both sides or is it their their own opinion on what it should be, you know be and they don't care how many people pile in the other side or whatever it is mm-hmm. um uh, i i if like if this because if this were designed this type of prop to get balance on both sides I mean, who is honestly taking viewer under four and a half? You yeah, know, I, I don't even see it. So I mean, it is one, minus 143, I guess. So that's OK, so okay. so it could trend to five. I yeah. Mean, OK, because because I, I actually I actually would 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 I'm actually going to predict that by 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 lock time, it is like five with a juice on. Um, right. I, I can't I can't see four, four and a half being, being possible. Um, in any case, um, I have. Uh, Bueller as a very, very secondary pitching option to say the least. I mean, there's just so many options here that I have a little more confidence in that I don't think I'm going to get to him. Um, right. Despite the fact that, you know, he, he always he always seems to do it when I don't think he's, he's viable. Um, and no, and he's going to be 5% owned. Right. So, so, so uh, uh, I'll, you know, if, if you're, if listen, I'll put it to you another way, if you're MMEing and you script or do whatever it is and you get, like some of him just make sure you just keep it yeah. <laughs> um and and as far as the as the hitting goes uh both i did look at both DraftKings and FanDuel a little bit today just just to be a little you know, making up for me not being around yesterday and um i do have the dodgers as probably my favorite FanDuel stack um and this is not with ownership considered yet but mm-hmm. and on, on DraftKings, i have them one of you know one of one, two, three, four, five, five teams that, that I, that I'm kind of targeting, um, you know, and I don't worry about them scoring 10 runs either for them to score 10 runs. It's got to be like a Tuesday. You know what I mean? I, I'm not too, I'm not too worried about the Dodgers bouncing off the 10 run performance here. Right. And everything else you said makes a lot of sense. I mean, the fact that they know this pitcher a little bit and, uh, and, and they're, you know, they still have all these lefties that they can, they can go after it. And just because they did home runs yesterday, I don't, doesn't mean they're not going to hit them today. And, and mm-hmm. uh, um, I uh, look, it's, it's funny. Like the Dodgers, you don't really get to play them all that often in the early part of these early, uh, these early windows. Right. Um, because they're either at home or they're in their division on the road. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and it's almost like weird to see them. You know what I mean? Like, like it, uh, it, it does change the ownership too. I've noticed on them and, and part of it, you could say, oh, they're not in Dodger Stadium and all this. But I really think people factor in because when, when you don't get the lineups out until 30 minutes before lock, 
it's just there's it's just natural that people are going to be less inclined to play you except for the one guy who stands out like if they play rios at, at batting fourth then he'll be more popular if they announce it 30 minutes before lock but everybody else you know getting their lineups out early it, it, it does make a difference in how much they're played i really believe that like more than ever i mean the dodgers the dodgers were probably the fifth i think they i think that i saw a thing that they were fifth highest owned team um across dk last year in terms of stacks and they probably should have been first or second. You know what I mean? Um, anyway, but, I mean, but in fairness, I mean, they always get, get you know, they, it, it is a pricing thing too. You know, sure, sure, uh, sure, sure. There are other, there are other factors. One hundred percent. It just seems to. I mean, when you look at yesterday and everybody's talking about, well, it could go this way now, it could go this way with the stacks, and there was rain p- p- questions of the Dodger game, and the Dodgers all end up like 30 percent owned. I just don't think that would have happened if the same situation was happening on the West Coast, in my opinion. Well, and then you speak, you know, speaking of which, you know, you have these yeah. two games like right, right on the front of the, of the DK slate here. You know, you, have, you get the Dodgers against the Chai Sai Gray and followed right up by the Yankees taking another shot at, uh, at Zimmerman. You know, if, if, listen, we haven't gotten to these games yet, but we won't for like a while. But all, all of us, all I know is instinctively, if there is something that you can like later, uh, hitting wise, they're going to be like a half a percent on like whoever it is. <laughs> You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. there are people are going to pound, pound on these Yankees and Dodgers, and probably for good reason. But the fact is, they're both early slates games, and 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 uh, they're going to they're going to they're going to dominate. I think the slate as far as ownership goes. The the only thing that may be difficult is one the pricing for the Yankees right. that you want. Um, the uh, the Yankees lineup came out the way it did yesterday. Won't it'll come out looking a lot better today when they'll have Lemayhew in there. But we won't have there won't be Donaldson, so they're a little bit softer. Over, well, he's not back yet, right? Right. Okay. And, you know, again, we're, we're seeing this matchup. This is the fourth time we've seen this. Montgomery it's like every day, but it's Montgomery Zimmerman. I like every like single day. We cover, yeah. The, the, the only times they don't pitch against this must be on the weekends or something like that. Because right. I, I, right. I, I really feel like every time I look, it's, it's Montgomery and Zimmerman. And they're supposed to be Bill Miller again behind the plate tonight. I'm not mm-hmm. sure that's actually the case, but that's what I've got right now. Uh, who's the best pitcher's umpire in baseball. Okay. Um, Zimmerman had two really good outings against the Yankees and then got got beaten up in his last one uh montgomery had he had he went the other way he had uh one medium one and two very pedestrian performances if montgomery gets any ownership at all tonight there is no way i'm gonna play him um 8k for a guy who hasn't he's played this he's had three chances against his team he hasn't got scored more than 13 fantasy points and they're seeing him more and more often so i don't see that i, I don't like montgomery particularly he's on my list of guys because I, I mean the other numbers will tell you, hey, he makes some sense, especially if Bill Miller's back there and he gets through, you know, enough innings. He should get 15 to 15 plus fantasy points most of the time, but he hasn't done it yet. So I, uh, I'm i on the, uh, the side of Fady Montgomery. I'm guessing you're going to be with me because you usually are on this one. Yeah, I mean, I have him. Uh, the only thing I have going, he has going for him is, again, is about, you know, I don't think he's going to get on today um, just because there's so many options. Yeah, maybe. I, I, I think he might. Well, well, not. I mean, I don't think it's be that old. I have anywhere between 10 and 15 percent. You, you tell me whether that's owned on the slate, but maybe that is, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I don't I, I just there just has to be better upside than, than, and other ways to play than the, than the play Montgomery. And not not to mention that, you know, they, they don't really they don't really pitch him. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. they, they get him in just to give him his win or whatever. And then they get him out of there, you know, so um I don't know exactly how he's going to compete for, for, for fantasy points with some of these, some of these other, other guys. Um, so uh, I'm probably not, I'm probably going to be off him, but like, likewise, same thing I said with viewers. And if I get to him somehow, I mean, I'm not going to X him out just for spite, you know, but, but, uh, mm-hmm. but I'm, he's, you know, it would, it would take me quite a few lineups hand building to, for me to play him. That's for mm-hmm. sure. And as far as the hitting goes, um, yeah, I mean, that's, the Yankees are all right up there. I mean, you know, one of the, one of the top, uh, one of the top stacks on both sides. And um, yeah, like you said, they are getting priced kind of healthy. I mean, you're getting judges that, I mean, 6,400, even Stan is 6,300. And, and like you said, I mean, Zimmerman has, you know, they finally got to him, but he's been, um, he's mm-hmm. been, he's, he's had some games, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think I prefer the Dodgers to the Yankees. Um, I, I just feel that's a little safer given the prices, you know, because because I, I feel as though with the Yankees, you really want to really play Judge and or Stanton. Um, whereas the Dodgers, I really don't care. You know what I mean? I'll play like a bunch of different guys over there. Like if I don't get to whoever the most expensive guy is, like if I don't get the bets, I, I really don't care. 
You know what I mean? Like right. I, if, if I could play, I play anybody. I play Lux, I play Rios, I play right. Bellinger. You know what I mean? So it's where the Yankees. I always feel as though if I'm not getting at least one of Judge or Stanton, I'm just kind of just missing out on two home runs somehow. Right. Um, uh, so so I do I do prefer the Dodgers I think to the Yankees, but but the Yankees certainly you know they're in play. But again, if I was going to hand build, if I was going to force something in, if I was going to like go for a combination of ownership, or whatever, probably would do something else except for the Yankees. Yeah, I would throw out that I think the judge with Stanton together is going to be lower owned than. It- well, right, because you can't have your exactly. more salary left. Especially when you factor in that Glaber is now forty eight hundred on DraftKings. Right. Um, that's a that's a guy who you know who will who I think is going to have almost no ownership on DK, and I think he's going to be extremely popular on FanDuel because he's two point seven. Um, I really and I and I think that there is enough ways to stack the Yankees. Like yesterday, I stacked the Yankees in one of my big builds, and it didn't quite work out. But you know, you you get Glaber, you get you get Judge at twenty percent. And then you get Stanton at nine percent. Then you get Glaber at three percent, and what's it called at two percent? Um, well, I think it was Kiner Falefa who I played yesterday. Not the most exciting play, but again, they didn't have their normal lineup out. You can, you can. They aren't. They are more off the board than you think. The problem is you need those other guys to do something. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that's that's really what it comes down to. But but I, I do I do have the Yankees right. I do have the Yankees and Dodgers as two preferred stacks. I have more preferred stacks than usual today, and um, probably going to have to. To cross out some other ones because I, I really do like the ones that I'm getting to. And I specifically like the Stanton judge Glaber part of it. If you can make it work financially, which is going to be tough. If you play them, like if you play them with Dodgers, it's going to be really tough. And we'll, we'll talk about some dumpster diving pitchers, which I think is the wrong slate to do it. But if you wanted to get a different build and, and really stuck to those stacks, you might have to do it. Um, another game without great hitting conditions, but it is Yankee stadium and I'm not worried about it. Um. So here we have an interesting one on another another the, you know the 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 what used to be Walker Bueller light now might be the 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 better version of Bueller at least for fantasy production. You have uh, Philly and Atlanta, and I have interest in Freed tonight, and I actually think other people are going to as well. Uh, I you know we've seen we've seen some things trend in the right direction for him to be a better fantasy pitcher. The strikeouts are up a little bit. They're they're more, more consistent. They're much better per inning than Bueller's are. He basically is a lock for a quality start almost every time he goes out there. Now the matchup isn't ideal against Philadelphia, but uh, he is a good against the lineup they'll be putting out there. He is a you know almost a thirty strikeout rate for his career. Bless you, and um, so I think he's kind of interesting. And I and I and Kyle Gibson as much as you know, there's times I want to pick on him. I don't think I, I want to make my priority stack Atlanta on a big slate against a guy who's at least a competent pitcher. However they're not going to be owned. And this is one of the better hitting conditions on the slate today. So I, I'm sort of going back and forth on it myself. There also is a little bit of rain concern here, um, but it is 81 degrees and humid in Atlanta. And I I think that maybe I I would play some, some more, more of a mini stack. I I don't mind any of the top guys. Akuna Olsen would be my favorite followed by, uh, uh, so yeah, Akuna Olsen followed by Ozuna and, Albies, but I think Atlanta is probably more of a secondary option for me today. Although I do want to attack this hitting weather. So I'm sort of, I'm sort of up in the air with Atlanta. It's just, I like a lot of other stacks. Yeah. Uh, I have Max Freed is kind of in, in a, a whole glut of nine K pitchers that, that are like you kind of uh, alluded to They're They're kind of, they're different profiles. You know, they, they all projecting very similar as far as fantasy points, but they're just a little different. And um, and Freed, as we've discussed for years now, is 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 you know pretty pretty solid for the win, pretty solid for the innings, and and strikeouts. He's uh, you know we could say he's improved this year, but he's you know he's not that typically that that high ceiling strikeout guy. And and I always feel as though it's better to play Max Freed on slates where you don't have a whole bunch of guys that that could pop numbers and. But, you know, as I'm staring at this, I wonder how many of these guys really do have that kind of ceiling. Well, I guess we'll get to it. Um, I, I, yeah. When I first looked at them, oh, my God, like, you know, like seven guys are going to score 30 fantasy points. But may, maybe it's maybe it's not so easy to score 30 fantasy points anymore. I, I don't know. And, and by the way, and, and for what it's worth, Freed has done it twice this season. Yeah, this I know. Season. I know. It's I not know. like he is. He, I do think he's in that category of guys. But it, like you said, he doesn't. I mean, he has a five and a half K props. There's other guys we're going to talk about who have six and a half, seven and a half K props. And are against much weaker opponents. Uh, just oh, what, what odds can I look? What odds can I get on on Bueller versus Freed as far as K's? That, I, I, what can I get? Two to one? I mean, one's four and a half, one's five and a half. I should be able to get something, right? 
It should be something. I don't know what it'll end up at. Um, that's okay. a good question. I don't know. Um, um, I like. I sort of like the over for both of them. So it's kind of hard okay. for me to say it's there. Fair enough. Yeah. But I, I, as far as the hitting, I didn't quite get to either of the hitting as my top. Some of my top options. Um, obviously, I didn't really factor in the weather so much as you, you know, as you pointed out. So again, if the weather is that favorable, I, I'm sure the projections will creep as well, and I'll probably you know see them a little bit, a mm -hmm. little bit stronger. But um, this is, I don't want to say stay away, but this, this game isn't all that exciting for me. Yeah, I, I, I just, uh, yeah, I, I agree. I just want to keep throwing out the, if Acuna, if we think Acuna is going to be low owned, we should just keep playing Acuna because it's the Jose Ramirez thing last night. I'm just like every night, just get some Acuna or Ramirez if you're making multiple lineups and it doesn't, don't even care about who they're playing against. <laughs> they're either going to, somebody's going to steal a base. They're probably going to, one of them will probably hit a home run. That's what it feels like anyway, every night. It's just one of these guys goes nuts. Um, Detroit, Minnesota. Uh, this is another one. I am definitely on board with the Minnesota stack. Uh, Brisky, we've seen him give up, what is he, in what, 20 some odd innings? He's given up uh, seven home runs. He has been wild at times. He doesn't strike people out. You have Minnesota, who's a team that that's one of their weaknesses. If you're going to get to them, that's what you want a high strikeout guy. Guys like Kepler, Buxton, unfortunately, they're going to be, they're going to be owned as well. But I do have Minnesota as a priority. And I think that um, Sonny Gray is, is just ridiculously underpriced. So, uh, I will, I will play Gray and I will play the Minnesota side and, and Gray is one of the cheaper guys who, you know, could end up in the mid twenties. Uh, actually, you know, he's got a five and a half K prop. He's got a good pitchers ump on out there. And, uh, so I, I like him and I, and I like the Minnesota side of the hitting quite a bit today. Yeah, the Burns Gray pairing is going to be, you know, where where most cash games go, and 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 a lot a lot of GPP players will, will play this also, um, because look, Gray is is really cheap, um, but I mean I don't know. Let's 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 just uh, play devil's advocate for a second. So he he was coming off, I guess, injuries, whatever. Pitched four, didn't pitch five, didn't pitch five, didn't pitch five, and finally in his last outing, they um, he pitched eighty five pitches again. He got through six innings. Uh, against a really weak team went with a 10 run lead you know what I mean and and uh and and you know got the job done right um I I would I he's for, for me just like every other projection system you know is is pricing him at as the best point per dollar play yeah right um probably supposed to not play him I don't think um but 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 if but 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 as we say every day you, you can definitely play him, but if you're going to play Sonny Gray and Burns, like for example, then you just really just don't want to play the other chalkier. Yeah, you don't want to try and stack the, well, you're going to have a hard time doing it anyway, but stack right. the Dodgers or Yankees with those two. and expect Yeah, but 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 I, I do, and, and the Twins, unfortunately, um, for me, is, you know, they're showing up, like I said, it's a really, really good value, really good stack, as you mentioned, and they're probably going to be owned also, you know, and uh, there's, there's going to be a lot of builds that kind of set for correlation that have both gray and the twins, you know, to get some, some, some kind of like, you know, correlation with pitchers and whatever. So it's going to add to the ownership there. Um, yeah. So I guess one thing you could do is play twins without gray. That might give a little, I mean, do a little something different, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, but I agree with you in general. I mean, I do like gray as an, as an option. I do like, um, I do like the, the twins as an option. And I'm, I just wonder what what's going to happen if I if I if I set like Saberson things to like max max pain in the ass settings if they're just going to like give me like eighty percent tigers or something like that you know what I mean yeah. I, I I don't know it's very possible um, I, I just because it, it seems like good theory to go against these chalky SP twos um, in general but uh, not to say that it's a, he's a bad play but I'm not particularly happy about playing him as chalk how about that. Yeah, I, I hear all of these things, especially like because we have pitchers who can like, you know, like Burns who can, I mean, just completely hammer a slate in to score 35 fantasy points like, and it's harder for Gray to have that that route for Gray is harder but just on paper I mean I, I think that they have the is this the second lowest run total on the slate or the lowest run total on the slate. There. Yeah, and uh, you do have wind blowing in at 10 miles an hour which keeps me a little bit less on the twins it's it's blowing in from center. Um, so it, which actually oddly enough isn't always as bad so. Uh, but I, but I do, I do like the, the twins in general and the pricing on some of these guys are great. Like Kepler, 
You also have some really ridiculous pricing on like Correa is 50 at 5,400. I don't really know where this is coming from. If they just keep hiking his price up every day. And I'm trying to figure out why, because he has hit for no power this season. Um, he's had two home runs this year, I believe. It just feels like he's like one of those guys and he always gets owned too. So I would, if it was me, I would be trying to play, you know, I guess you, you, you know, you'd want to include him in stacks, but I, I like the Buxton Kepler much, much better. And I would rather play like Gary Sanchez at 4.8, which I don't think as many people will do today. And you could even go down to Larnage at a uh, two, 2.3 to get, you know, a little bit of a funny stack there. So just want to throw that out there. All right. Uh, and then we move over to another one who's going to be low owned. And I, this was one I'm having trouble understanding exactly why with Gaussman. Um, because he has one bad outing, we no longer think Gaussman is one of the elite plays. Cause I'm looking at him as being, you know, pretty much like a lot lower owned than even Freed is here. And I don't really know exactly why. Um, I, the, you know, the Toronto, St. Louis doesn't strike out a ton, but Gaussman can make up for that anyway. Um, he's, you know, 9.5. He's got a six, uh, he's only got a five and a half K prop, which is a little bit low for him. Um, I, I don't know. Is it three and a half run total against him? It's in St. Louis. I, I definitely have a little bit of interest in Gaussman, uh, especially because of the ownership and, I'm it's shocking to see Jordan Hicks starting against the Blue Jays and have the Blue Jays run total at four. So I can promise you one thing, the Blue Jays are not going to be owned tonight unless there's like a pitching change or something, but the respect for Hicks is a little out of control to me. Uh, it's still more of a somewhat bullpen game, but Toronto is definitely something we could do if we wanted to get different with our stacks or even as one-offs and they're cheaper than they've ever been before because they've struggled. So you got Vlad Guerrero at 5K, which we, I mean, when do we not see Vlad at 6K usually? And uh, Vlad uh, Springer, I just don't think anybody's playing these guys. And that's going to make them maybe more of a secondary stack for me because I don't know if I like their you know ability to go all the way off. But I think they're a little bit being too low projected here. And uh, the run total at four just is too low to me. So I, uh, I do like Toronto as a little bit off the board stack, which always feels good because it's Toronto and you could play you know, guys with serious power like Vlad Hernandez, Springer, uh, even Chapman and Bichette are all guys with enough power to, you know, this, they could win you a slate here. So I, I am I am high on the Toronto side, uh, even though, again, there's a lot of good stacks to play with. Uh, what do you think about the pitching and then the hitting over here? Yeah, so Gausman is is one of the very legitimate, you know, high upside pivots off of um, off of Burns. You know, we'll, we'll get to see some Gallon, you know, later, very similar. You know what I mean? Um, and, um, so he's, he's definitely a very viable pivot. It was like, kind of like the, I guess kind of like the Zach Wheeler of last night, sort of, you know what I mean? Um, yep. when, when Cole was really high on, but Zio Wheeler had that similar upside, you know, right. um, maybe not exactly the same upside, but, and the funny thing is, is that, is that the, the, the Cole performance last night is just such, such a, Garrett Cole does that more than anybody. Yeah. Like, yep. you know, <laughs> like give up five runs in the first inning. But everybody thinks he's going to get chased out of the game as negative fans, but ends up like 25. I mean, that yeah. happens all the time. Yeah. Um, I think they let him pitch all eight innings or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's just crazy. Anyway. Um, Max Scherzer and Verlander are the other two. Who I've, yeah. seen, I mean, I've seen those guys throw complete games where they give up six runs in the first two. Yeah. Innings. I mean, they just get mad. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> they just throw they end up with like 10 or 11 strikeouts. And yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um, so yeah, Galsman is, is, is certainly in play. And I, listen, I have no, I don't care too much about, the results in the last game or two, you know what I mean? Whatever. I mean, he's been throwing heat the last two seasons. Um, so I got no problem with that. And, and yeah, St. Louis does, you know, they, they tend to strike out less um, than, than maybe other teams. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know what, that'll keep Gausman's ownership low, I guess. I don't know. Um, so I guess that's fine. Um, uh, as far as playing Toronto, um yeah, it's 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 definitely dangerous because I mean they 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 haven't they haven't scored a run in in in, in years apparently, <laughs> um so they haven't they haven't been 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 been, been seeing it so I don't know how, how much you believe in that stuff but um it's been awful I mean it's 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 actually been shocking considering how talented their offense is how few runs yeah. in the season sorry so I mean look like, but 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 you said they are going to be really really low on and there's good name value there's good there's good there's good talent on there. And no, they're not going to go hitless for the next, you know, 75 games. Right? So, yeah. so uh, you play uh, Guerrero. I mean, it's, 
Only, only too recently, he was like over six k when Judge was forty five hundred. You know, and he, now, he, now he was, yeah, he has been for like two years now. Right, and now it's the opposite. So right. yeah, take a shot with him, and then the other. You know, I don't even know if these guys are still are still even priced. I mean, Bichette, 50, uh, he's fifty one hundred. He's still he and Springer are, but the rest of them most Chapman four k. No one's gonna play him righty righty. I imagine. I don't know. Nobody's um, playing any of these guys. I promise you. You can get a nice. What happened? What happened to this guy? What happened to Biggio? Wow, he's never never followed yeah. through on the on the on the rookie year. Yeah, crazy. And uh, some of it was defensive issues, and then and then he then it, that led to him hitting his hitting issues. So it's a it's a weird story because I thought he was going to be a part of these the you know the, the 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 juniors team. You know what I mean? The 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 Bichette Junior, the the Guerrero Junior. Um, what not not but you know what I mean? But all the you, you would have thought that he would have been right there with them. So. Uh, but, but I do, I just want to say, I, I keep getting back to it. I, I don't think you need to fully stack Toronto to get different. I think you can, you can play a little three man and be off the board. And that's, that's right. probably, or even just two guys, they're going to be so low owned that I don't think you should work. Like, I think that it's just, you're getting some, some, some big edge. They don't have any lefties, but for what it's worth, the wind is blowing in fairly strong from right field. Um, but that does not, that, that shouldn't matter for the righties, you know, at least the ones hitting the ball, you know, out to left or whatever. So I'm getting more on the Toronto second as a secondary stack only uh, as a, as a, as a something I'm going to do tonight. Probably not a full stack for me though. Well, well, next next game it answers a question that everybody's going to probably have to deal with is is who do you like more, someone like Cesar, someone like Gallison, right? Because those are two very you know yep. they're, they're two non Burns pitchers who have big strikeout upside. Um, both both their matchups are you know not cupcake, but not exactly the the, the toughest either. And uh, I, I think that they're both going to be similarly owned, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. I think so right. uh, the answer to the question for me is I, I just don't know. And I have Cease very similar to Gallus. Actually, that's not true. I do have Cease rated higher than Gallus. So if you give me, give me a choice right now, I would, I would put Cease higher. Um, and I have Cease currently, you know, top, top five options. But again, it really depends on, on, on how you construct it, whether you want to double pay up, whether you want to pay one up, one down, if you want to go double punt and pitch in it, all, all these things are very viable today. Mm -hmm. um, and Cease is certainly an option. Pavetta is, is I, I, I think Pavetta in general is a really good GPP pitcher just because he's really, really bad, like a lot. And every once in a while, he's pretty yeah, look, good. You look what um, he did last time out. That was crazy. Yeah, but it's just too many pitchers, I think, today for me to, for me to get there. Um, yeah. I, I might, and I, this, I didn't think about this, you know, my numbers, but I, I, I might try the White Sox possibly. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're pretty expensive. I think um, no one's play. I don't think they're going to be particularly owned. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, Pavetta can be really good and he can also be really bad. So um, I'm looking for an excuse to play anything other than, than, than Yankees and, and, and Dodgers. And the first thing I came up with is Minnesota and they're going to be chalky too. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna get into your Toronto idea a little more as the day goes on, and and maybe maybe these White Sox or something you can do. Yeah, there's. I considered both sides of this one, and this is a tough one for me because I've always been a like a the, I'm the guy who likes to play Pavetta at the low ownership. You know what I mean? And he, I mean, he's he is he. Look at what he's done this last three outings. He's looked yeah, like the best side of himself. And partly it's because you're facing some right-handed dominant lineups and mm -hmm. including this White Sox team, which he was really good at, he struck out eight and six innings the last time they faced each other. They, uh, they don't have the, the lefties that you're mostly terrified of. At the same time, I'm going to put Gavin Sheets as, as, as an interesting one-off because we know Pavetta gives up lots of power to lefties. So um, I don't know how I can get Pavetta in on this slate, but everybody else is going to feel the same way. And I am probably going to, to you know, if I, if I, depends on how many lineups I end up playing, but I do think it's not a bad idea to get to him. I think Cease is, look, it's, it's a tough guy to watch. You know what I mean? He tries to strike everybody out where it, he'll have somebody 0-2 and the count runs full. That's why you don't see him getting through innings very often. He just basically is, is trying to strike everybody out. And, and to that point, he's the number one strikeout pitcher per inning in baseball. He's the number one strikeout overall pitcher in baseball by a, by a, a decent margin per inning. Um, and uh, that's a hard guy to resist at, you know, what could be lower ownership than guys who, you know, have, have, a, have a K prop of two less than him who would cost the same amount. I just think he's interesting. He's the highest K prop on the slate. Um, so I, even against Boston, I'm willing to take that gamble. So I will have Cease as one of the guys 
who I try to get in. Um, so far, I have Cease and, and Gray as, as semi-priorities, but there's going to be a few more guys we talk about. And then Pavetta, if you're playing 150, I would definitely try to get at least five, maybe 10% even of Pavetta, just, just in, a, in a large field, because there, there is that upside for him. And if he keeps rolling like this, I mean, he's always been talented and we might be, we, you know, I'm not going to say he's turning the corner at this age, but I think you're going to see he has the upside to put up like the 35s, the 40s, like he did last time out. Um, and and I, I would be interested, but I, I do think that, you know, him, him throwing complete game his last time out does make me a little bit more hesitant to want to maybe take that gamble because that's a lot, you know, that's a lot to, to, go, to go through, but you don't see pitchers throw nine inning games followed up with an eight inning game very often. No. So anyway. Um, and by the way, how about well, they already released the Dodger lineup? That's wild. Um, did I miss? Is that? That's weird. Um, anyway, we'll uh, we'll jump over to, Cle to Cleveland and Houston and cheats. It just, I mean, broken record, but there's another really good pitcher on this slate against a pretty weak offense. Although they don't strike out as that much against righties, but he's a lefty. Um, and he's just a really good real life pitcher. And that's uh, Valdez. If we're going to play Pavetta, you know, Valdez is the safer option. And we'll have a little bit of ownership, but not that much on this slate. I don't think I'm going to end up doing it because I want the maximum upside unless I'm going to pay way down for somebody. But I think Valdez deserves to be in the conversation. And I think that Houston is a totally legitimate pivot off of the other stacks that we mentioned. I just, again, don't feel overly excited. The thing that's great about them, why they will, they'll keep their ownership down is they're, they're also really expensive. So people will favor the Dodgers and Yankees and twins, uh, even well, guys like Buxton from the twins um, over this team. So I, I, you have to have some love for Houston at, at lower ownership. That's, that's where I'm at in this one. Yeah. I like Houston a lot here um, as a, as a, as a, as a lower owned stat. Um, they're one of my top, you know, four or five on the whole board. And as far as Valdez go, I mean, he's, um, you know, to me, not particularly exciting, but, Again, another kind of like ten percent or ten uh, percent owned guy who has who has talent. And I, the only thing I would say, not to be a not to be a not to be a stickler, but but with the exception of of, uh, of Toronto, he's had he's had it pretty easy as far as his matchups go. I mean, That's he's true. had Texas's and Pittsburgh's and Washington's and Detroit's. You know what I mean? So um, not that he's not good, but I'm just saying. Um, yeah. So I don't know if I'm going to get to, get to Valdez, but he certainly is pretty live for a win right um the only thing i'd add to that is that cleveland while they occasionally bust out with a huge performance their offense isn't anything to feel no like that's what i'm good. saying like yeah. i'll say well, i'll give you another example let's let's say in their next matchup like valdez is going against say boston or something like that or some some team yeah, you don't want to mess around there no and then i would say like well he's had easy matchup like he's at cleveland so i would include cleveland as kind of a crappy team yeah. also you know what yeah. i mean so it's not as if it's like such a huge upgrade to or a downgrade, I have to go against Cleveland. But uh, yep. yeah, I mean, I, I unfortunately, not to be a broken record again, but I'll put him in the same list with 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 Montgomery. You know, guys, if I get to, I'll be I'll be I'll be okay with. But I'm not gonna say, oh, cool, cool. I'm gonna play Valdez in my big ones because I feel like it. You know, um, right, right. I Houston, I, do like I think it. I might do that. Uh, I might yeah. actually just just jam Houston in there if I feel like it. I, you know what I mean? I, I I do like that. Just like the whole idea of not playing the Yankees or Dodgers, not playing the chalkier Minnesotas. Uh, I think I think Houston is is a team that 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 can fit that bill. Mm -hmm. I, I I agree. Um, so that I have them below the other guys, but not by much. And because of the ownership, they might get bumped up a little for me. Um, all right, cheats. And I got another funny situation here. Um, Boy, Syndergaard was awful and uh, just had a just had a bad inning. It, it happens after looking like he was sort of bouncing back against Tampa Bay. Finally, got his K's up to seven. I'm confused at what to do here because this feels and they're and they're facing the same team again. I just feel like this is a, a clear bounce back spot. But do we need to even do it? It's probably the wrong slate. I don't um, know. Maybe you do. <laughs> I thought about this. I have him on my list. I I can't figure out. I mean, it's a pretty awesome pivot off of uh, off of the other guys in that, you know, the, the 6,800 of gray and all that. And uh, why couldn't this work out? And he's, he started to get his leash back. He seems to be finding himself. Uh, it is pretty astro. It's like incredible how many stolen bases he's given up this year. I have to say it's a very strange thing to look at, but like he, every he's given up multi stolen bases in every game, but two that he started this season. Um, that's was that six out of eight. That's like, you never see that in modern day baseball. Um, but again, I, there's not like, I don't know who to take, you know, full advantage with on the, uh, 
on the maybe Simeon, I guess, but on the uh, Texas side. But I, I was trying to think like, is there is there an angle I could play there? Anyway, I, long story short, my my thoughts on this game are. I have the tiniest bit of interest in Syndergaard and I'm going to try and figure that one out as the day goes on. And then I have, I have an interest in fading what I think might be, I don't know. The angels certainly make some sense. We know that the story with Dunning is, you know, he's pretty good. Like doesn't, doesn't actually, or pretty good enough. Doesn't, uh, doesn't get lit up all that often. Uh, I mean, it gave up two home runs the last time they faced this team, but they were two solo home runs and he actually was in control for pretty much the whole game. Um, I, I don't know if I want to play an Angels team that, while they're not going to be chalky, they will have three very chalky players, actually maybe even four. Uh, I think Trout, Otani, and uh, Velasquez potentially at short because he's 2.1, which sort of makes it me think that people are going to build this stack as the next stack, um, maybe behind the, the Dodgers, Yankees, and Minnesota. So uh, as of right now, I am probably going to fade these guys, which always makes me nervous because Trout and Otani are great. Um, you could do this, the two man stack with him, but again, you're playing pretty popular two mans and I don't love doing that. Um, Rendon won't be owned, so you can throw him into a mix if you wanted to stack it, but I, I don't personally love the idea of stacking. It is nicer weather, a little bit warmer today in LA. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm sort of up in the air with the angels. I, I feel like I don't play the angels enough so far this year, but at the same time, I feel like I, I, I guess I'm feel like I'm going to probably just duplicate that again tonight. Yeah, but the Angels are going for them again. It's that late start, you know what I mean? And then they're just not going to get on as much as maybe they would otherwise. Right. But what they're going against them again is is Dunning. It's so funny. In Dunning's last game against them, you know, he, they gave up, he gave up two home runs and only three hits. Right. <laughs> right. In six innings, he was really solid, actually. Yeah. yeah so, yeah, I don't know if on a 12-game slate or whatever, that's the, the, that's the type of pitch you want to go after. Um, yeah. So, I'm probably – you know, probably off of that, but I, I'm, I think I used to, when I would play poker and I was about to do something really, really dumb, I would tell, I would tell Cliff, like, dude, somebody would take my mouse away. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Someone call my mouse, whatever it was. I'm feeling that way about thinking about doing something like just jamming Syndergaard, my big buy-in and just freaking mm -hmm. just going for it. You know what I mean? Cause I do, I do see, I, I do see a variation where he, mm -hmm gets 30 freaking fantasy points at, at 2% ownership and, and pivoting off of all the Sonny Gray business. You know what I mean? Right. Um, or playing with Sonny Gray, whatever, you know? Um, but I, I, I just had this, maybe it's just come on my homer. I remember when he was better on the Mets, you know, and, and he was, he was part of like the, the, the dream team freaking rotation before everybody got injured. Right. right. Um, right. And I don't know. Uh, does he have another game in him? Well, the good news is it is Texas, and the good news also is, is that he just got got beaten by them. So uh, have a little pride, man. Let's go. <laughs> let's, let's 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 put together a good one. I don't know. I I, I kind of want to say projections be damned. I want to try this one. I like it. Uh, I, I'm in. I'm into the idea. I'm a big Syndergaard fan from way back, but I, I know he hasn't been the same. But I, I I think he was trending in the right direction before his last start. So I, it's a good enough reason for me. Um, especially because he's at a different, you know what I mean? He, he, he and Gray both can put up that, that big game from that lower price. And maybe, maybe that's even something you, interesting you could do is play those two guys together. And then, then you could jam in the Dodgers and Yankees because you're already different with your build. Do you know what I mean? Yep. And by the way, for just for what it's worth, as we were on today, was that the first, is, that, is there a reason why I have a Dodgers? I don't know what's happening. Somebody just projected Rios. I don't know if I missed something and Betts projection was removed. I have to double check, but We'll figure that out before the six o'clock. Uh, well, if Rios is in, I mean, that's even, you know. Yeah, it just makes the Dodgers so easy to play. Yeah. Because um, he's like the only cheap one. <laughs> all right. Uh, Arizona and KC. Boy, who would have thought on all this, all these great, you know, options and everything, but Arizona is legitimately a good stack tonight. And the roof is closed, which I hate. You look at the Arizona, they got a five run total against – Heasley, who with a bad Royal bullpen behind him and a guy who just basically can't strike anybody out um, from the little bit that we've seen of him, it's kind of hard to see how they just completely fail you here and that they just get like, you know, unlucky and hitting line drives right at people. They're cheap. They've got different ways you could stack their lineup. Um, I think Varsho and Pavin Smith will get ownership, maybe Marte, but I, I think they're interesting. And uh Again, they, they're, they're on the board for me. Uh, and Zach Gallen, I have him behind Seas and Burns. 
but I do think he's a legitimate option as well. I like the upside for these. I just look at him and Cease and I go, they both have tremendous, they both have solid upside, but I'll take the guy with the highest, you know, the highest strikeout prop on the slate, the best strikeout pitcher in baseball over Zach Gallen, um, just because I think that he's a, he's simply got a higher, uh, I guess a higher ceiling. They both have high ceilings. Anyway, I do like Gallen. He's one of the guys I've got circled right now, but I've got a number of them. I just prefer uh, C's and Burns, I believe. That's where I'm at here. Yeah, I, I pretty much second everything you said. I have Arizona showing up as a um, as one of my top five or six stacks, and that's not just because I always play Arizona. They actually look like a good play, like you were saying <laughs> in uh, today. Mm-hmm. Um, so I do like that. And Gowan, I, I completely second what you said. I'm going to have him right alongside maybe – I double second what you say because I have him sort of near seas, but maybe a little worse, you know. So I'm I'm exactly where where you are as far as that goes. So uh, probably going to get some gallon, depending on how many lineups I play. Probably going to get some Arizona, depending on how many lineups I play. Um, and again, it's a late game, so anything that's non Yankees and Dodgers is good for me. Um, and uh, I think I'm just with you on this. Pavin Smith, for what it's worth, has homered in eight of his last 13 games. I'm sorry, Christian Walker. And I just would, I have to sort of mention that because that's, that's like a pretty insane. I mean, I don't, I don't mean eight homers in 15, in 13 games. I mean, eight different games he's homered in out of 13 games. That doesn't happen very often unless your name's Aaron Judge. Um, that's pretty wild stuff. So I do like Walker as a, you know, as a one-off if you wanted to go that route. And I don't, somehow I, their projections have him a little lower than I thought. So unless that changes, he'll still, he still might be low on. Um, all right, uh, Seattle and Oakland, uh, another, especially, um, I, I would have interest in both these pitchers on almost any other slate. Uh, we, you know, Kirby is a, is a legit prospect. Um, he's been, you know, he had one good outing and two bad ones. Caprillion is a guy who actually is probably better than his price tag at 6,400. I don't, I just don't know if I can do it on this slate. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty much all I got here. And, and if you wanted to take any one-off bats in this game, I'm fine with it. Uh, Jesse Winker is probably the best one for me, but I don't love anything. And I don't hate if you wanted to take any of these guys. I also think Oakland's so cheap at using them as a secondary stack or might allow you to get in one of those big stacks you want. So um, maybe you could take that shot that Kirby, you know, struggles as a young guy, still trying to figure himself out. And uh this is one I'm looking for the, the hitting uh, pitcher's umpire, the umpire, not nothing and nothing special with the umpire. If there was an extreme hitter's umpire, I might be more inclined to take that weird shot against, you know, a guy making his fourth start in the major leagues. But he is a top prospect facing a horrible offense. Um, that horrible offense, though, is so cheap that it's hard not to want to have a little interest there. So sort of up in the air with what I'm going to do here and that the answer will probably be nothing. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do Kirby. Um, I'm, I'm going to, I think I'm going to be uh, playing the Kirby Gray pairings with those, those, those Dodgers. Oh, okay. Yankees things. You know I, like I, mean? that. I think that's how I'm, that's how, that's how I'm going to end up playing the Dodgers and the Yankees is, mm-hmm. is, is playing uh, the, the, the Kirby Gray thing together. And, mm-hmm. and uh, um, I mean, I've, I've, I've heard different people talk about Kirby different ways and I'm, you know what, uh, like you said, two his first game back, it was first, first start. He was great. Second two, you know, matchups were a little fishy for him. He was yeah. not as good. Prospect, look, he's, he's only 6K. And I, I actually think that he's going to get owned a little bit uh, today. Um, hmm. I, 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 I do. think you might be right. Um, and I think that my, my, that my, uh, my idea of, of Gray Kirby together with those guys is not going to be particularly off the wall either. But, but, that, that's, but that's, that, that's my opinion for now. I think that um, uh, I don't, but weirdly, I don't, I wouldn't want to play like a, a Burns Kirby, you know what I mean? Or, or a, or even like a cease Kirby. I, I, if I'm going to play Kirby, it, it'd be because of my prep, maybe double punting. Double punting. I, I, I totally agree with that. Yeah. Um, um, and, as, and as far as the hitting, I do, I do, I do like Oakland on the other side as well. Um, um, you know, just in case I'm wrong, <laughs> he's a, right. a combustible rookie. Anything's possible. Yeah. I, I will mention that keep, keep watching out for Julio Rodriguez on yep. the, uh, on the uh, Seattle side. I think this kid is good. I think Seattle actually is a much better team than they get credit for and will, it'll show as the season progresses. 
So, so this is really weird. Let me start with this next, with the, with the Milwaukee San Diego, because I, I don't think either, I think you were out this day or it was a weekend. Well, it would, it means the same thing, but it might've been the day that you were, that you were, that you were dealing with other stuff. Yeah. Like in the last time Burns, uh, Burns pitched. Oh yeah, you were out. Okay. This was during the week. I yeah. remember doing this by myself and, and I went through and I was, I didn't, didn't look at any industry stuff. I didn't look whatever. And, and Burns, I literally didn't like at all. I mean, like, I just, I, I like it five pitchers more than him. I didn't even come up with him. And like, when I, when I had my list of stuff, I'm like, oh, I, I think I played this guy and this guy. The people were in my Discord saying, what about Burns? What about Burns? He's going to be this chocolate, this chocolate. I, I just didn't get to him. I don't know. I, I don't know what it was about it. Maybe I was just, I was just feeling it, feeling it somehow. Pick that one, pick that particular one game where he got blown up, you know, I don't know. Uh, so in any case, um, I actually have him as 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 good, but not sort of similar. Like, I don't have him as that much better than anybody else. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know what it is about the projections that makes me that, that leads me that direction. But that's it's kind of where I am. So it, it turns out, like I said, that this the industry just somehow just decides that he's just that much better than all these guys, and that and that he's like necessarily going to perform. You know what I mean? Um, every single every single day, that I'll probably end up fading if he's if he's, if he's that chalky. Um, well, I'll just have to kind of say, um, it's, you know, San Diego is not there the worst team in the world. But you know, like you said, when Burns is humming, I mean, look, he's he's rough. You know? it's like, mm -hmm. But but I mean, let's look at his last couple. I mean, 10, 24, 21, 20. These are all pretty good. But you know, look, they were he was at Miami. Would at, would you take twenty five tonight from him? I don't know. I don't know if you. I don't know if you can get away with that. Honestly, I don't know. Twenty five is pretty good these days, but I guess so. I guess um, so. But I hear you. I mean, he's and he, and he's got. We know he's got the more upside. And what's what's nice about him is that because he's got such great control, you, you don't. He can pitch. He can do what Cole does. You know what I mean? Right. He can, he can have a, a bad yeah. start and end up with twenty some odd fantasy points. And then if he's cruising, that turns into thirty five fantasy yeah. points. You know. Well, um, the, the, the the part the the part I really want to talk about is 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 Blake Snell. Okay. Yeah. Um, so Blake Snell, first of all, I made it known to remind myself to mention this, is is, is completely free on FanDuel. Okay. Um, he's a, he's a, and he's also going to be less owned on FanDuel probably than DraftKings. He's he's six K flat on yeah, FanDuel. Kind of nuts. And I will be playing that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I will be playing FanDuel specifically so I can play Blake Snell or pitch. Um, on DraftKings, I have him. I have him as a really good play actually. Um, I have him as one of the top point per dollar plays, um, you know, Milwaukee, they've been obviously been doing better, but you know, Snell talk about having tricks. I mean, Snell, man, he can freaking still mow people down from time to time and including this playoff series. You know what I mean? Like he's, uh, I guess really good teams. So, yeah. uh, I mean, people are going to play him, right? They're, they're not going to prefer, forget to play Snell. They're going to play him. He's got a five and a half K prop, which is, okay. which is solid for the slate. Burns only has a six and a half to give you some you know, reference on that. Um, but I, I just want to say like the Blake Snell experience is just that it's, you know, it's, it's <laughs> That's true. That's true. they let him throw 84, 84 pitches in his first start, which is shocking. And, and, and we're trying to let him get through the fourth inning right. and he couldn't, he couldn't get out of the fourth. Right. Um, he gets wild and you get in trouble. Yeah. He's a guy who I always look at the umpire. You have a very middling umpire, so it's nothing real helpful okay. either way. Cause if I, if it was an extreme hitters umpire, I would, I could just fade him and just feel fine with it. The price is interesting, and I actually like the FanDuel play better because of the one pitcher factor. He could compete with the top level guys. Now, do you need the extra money? Well, if you want to play the Dodgers and Yankees, you do. Um, and I think that he's going to be low owned on FanDuel, and I think he'll have medium ownership on DraftKings. Um, but I do think by the end of the day, you're going to be able to talk him up a little bit. Yeah. So I have him as of right now as one of the guys, but probably a guy who I'm going to end up fading um, just because I think there's so many other good pitchers in. And even though he threw 80, 84 pitches in his last outing, I don't think he's even guaranteed to do that again if he's struggling. I, I mean, he he can get he I mean he can throw like fifty pitches in an inning if he gets wild. Every count it seems like is a full count with him, and it's just a matter of whether they take that you know the low change up on a three two pitch or whether they swing at it. You know, it's it's it feels like another guy who he's going to be great for the strikeouts per inning, but I, he might only be able to pitch four or five innings. So I want the mat, I want the ceiling. Um, and he, they would have to be really aggressive, the, the Milwaukee team, in order for him not to get there. The one thing is Milwaukee does have those type of hitters naturally. They're not a patient team. Um, 
So I definitely get both sides of the argument, just so many good pitching options. Um, and I think I am probably, I, I do have Burns. I don't have Burns much ahead of Cease, but I like the idea of playing those two together. Yep. Uh, it's, you know, and then let's say I played two big lineups. Maybe I would do that with one of them. And then maybe I would consider something like your uh, a Syndergaard and, and, uh, and uh, Sonny Gray or a, uh, uh, a gray with a uh, maybe even a Snell. I don't know. I, I one of one of the other cheapies though. Um, I actually think Caprillion deserves to be and Kirby deserve in that conversation as well. You know, you mentioned Kirby that you would consider that. Um, so, I, so I'm interested in all out routes to this. this. That's why this this slate is so interesting. Is that you've got a couple cheap stacks that aren't great hitting teams that you can use as secondary stacks to fill to put in these top guys, or you can go double spend down at pitching and then you can get a jam in the top guys and. It really goes either way. And by the way, we haven't, we're just about to get to the last game, which I'm not going to be playing either of these pitchers and neither will anybody else. But I mean, you have two really good real life pitchers who no one's going to play. And I don't think it's going to be a, a cross off game for me. I'm saying it right now, but if you're playing 150 again, you want to try and get some exposure to these guys. Um, both of them, Logan Webb, the problem is he's just such a good real life pitcher. I think he has the most quality starts per start of anybody on this slate. He had a, had a quality start in all but two of his outings this year. And even those, he barely missed the quality start in both of them. And just a really, really good pitcher who doesn't give up home runs. And then you've got Chris Bassett, who's also just a really good pitcher. But I probably am staying away. Yeah. Um, the closest I'll get, and so funny, I have them both exactly right on top of each other as far mm -hmm. as, as as options. And they're and just below everybody else. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to be I'm going to be off of this. I would say that if you're going to do a versus thing, like with Blake Snell and that, like, so like these guys in raw fantasy points project worse than Blake Snell does. I don't think that's right either. Um, I don't think the average, the median outcome for Blake Snell and his second start back off of an injury should be the same as two guys who have been consistently solid all year long. So if you're on a, you know, one of, one of the player prop sites where they, where they put somebody versus somebody, I would like play these guys who have a similar, who have a lower projection ahead of a guy like Blake Snell, but um, again, they're also obviously much more expensive. And the, the, the thing we like about Snell is that he's cheap and he's got upside. Um, all right. So just gonna, just to re-highlight that I think that my main focuses are the Dodgers, Yankees, Minnesota, and Houston um, with maybe I'm considering the Arizona part of it. And then Toronto is my main secondary stack because of the power upside and it'll allow me to get a little bit off of the chalk. Uh, in terms of one-offs, I have a bunch of them today. Kepler, Will Smith, uh, Vlad Guerrero, Acuna, Trout, Otani, obviously all these guys are awesome hitters and expensive. Stanton, Judge, Pavin Smith, Gavin Sheets, uh, Christian Walker, Jesse Winker, Julio Rodriguez. And those are the cheaper ones at the end that I mentioned that I like. And my favorite pitchers, I'm, I'm deciding between Gray, uh, Gallon, Burns, Seas, and Gaussman as my main guys uh, with a potential nod to, to Max Fried and Blake Snell there. I'm going to throw a couple of one-offs in here that maybe we didn't go over. I don't even know if these guys make the lineup, but these are just kind of like top point per dollar plays that I have. Um, one uh, talked about Houston. If Siri gets in, he's 2,500 uh, field. Uh, mm -hmm. Jed Lowry, 2,000 flat at Oakland. Um, got this guy, Mike Ford, 2K on Seattle. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know who that is, but um, uh, you mentioned already Max Kepler. Um, between him and Buxton, that's a good, that's a good two pairing over there. Sure. Um, and yeah, for me, uh, pitching wise, I'm, I'm really all over the place. Uh, it's just a matter of how you pair these things. I, I wouldn't mind a great Kirby thing, but the funny thing is, is you just mentioned, you know, playing Burns and Cease together and you could, you can do it. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> you, you have a zillion options. You could, you, there's a zillion ways you could combine these hitters and just for the hell of it, I just threw in like the Houston outfield without mm -hmm. even worrying too much about it. You know, I, I paid up for Alvarez and Tucker, who's kind of overpriced, right? And Brantley. And I still have 3K left to guy. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so it's, um, maybe you don't need, that's, that maybe that keeps Sonny Gray ownership low a little bit. Maybe you don't need to play him. But I think people are going to play. But if you want to play the Dodge and the Yankees, you do. Yeah. yeah. And then even like, even still 3K left per player means you're going to make some sacrifices right. a little bit. So right. Um, right. you have to be pressed to, to try and get in the rest of the use. You, you could, you could play the full ace stack with that Houston thing. And then right. <laughs> watch that right. come in today. Watch the ace score like 10 runs and Houston the outfield just goes nuts. If that could yeah. Be yeah. 
Um, anyway, guys, well, I will be live at six Eastern sheets. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about it. No, I'm that. good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good for, uh, for live today. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. All right, great. Well, we'll be live and, uh, we'll talk a little more NBA yesterday was a very up in the air when I, all I felt strongly was that Boston was going to kill him, but I felt very not strong about any of the DFS plays because there were just so many question marks and then Marcus Smart right. ruled out. So anyway, um, anyway, good luck to everybody tonight and we will hopefully, uh, we'll see you at six and we'll hopefully see somebody take one down tonight. Good luck everybody. Yep. See you at six.